These days, if you can see the value in making green screen videos that look thoroughly professional without your having to become a professional, stay tuned. Turns out, there's a template for that. It used to be that if you couldn't create a permanent setup for doing green screen, then green screen might be more trouble than it's worth. But new technology has made it possible to more easily bring a green screen into almost any room, not just because the screen is portable. We've had those for years. It's really that you don't need nearly as much light as you used to. I still have to say, though, that there's something so comforting about walking into a room you set up yourself, flipping a switch or two, and watching as your lighting, your green screen, your teleprompter, your, your camera, everything comes to life in a moment, right before your eyes, ready for you to just step up and start talking. It puts your mindset into, a, into great shoot mode before you even start. So let's take a closer look at how we can take a very small amount of room and gain quality with every step we take. And by the way, we've revised the ultimate small room green screen guide with the requirements and measurements to use everything I'm gonna be talking about today. So, we'll start at the back wall and work our way forward till we get all the way behind the camera to see exactly how much room we need and where things need to be placed to get the optimum effect with the least amount of work. So, just a word about the numbers. You'll see a lot of them today, and it's worth trying to use them because they're designed to produce a solid, simple setup that works perfectly for this kind of tech even if you have to set it up and tear it down each time. This is also a template, not a blueprint. I'll give you additional information that will allow you to adjust the template to your needs. If it was a blueprint, there would be only one way to do it, and any variation would result in failure. So, note when we get to the variation points, and I'll try to make it as easy as possible to follow. First of all, notice that we've left the old green screen in place mostly as a way of hanging a grayscale drop, which is useful for shooting certain kinds of video without needing the precision lighting for the green screen that's now underneath it. But it's kind of a legacy thing. Um, if you don't need that, you gain a whole foot of useful space. So we'll just leave the whole legacy thing out of our calculations for now. If you want to add some in later, just add one foot to your overall space requirement and that's variation one. So let's use the back of the green screen as our back wall, and that will be our starting point. That means we come forward nine and a half inches from the back wall to the front of the green screen. This is where you set up your first three lights. We place one backlight a foot or so above the camera frame. It hangs from a very solid C-stand with an extension arm. The light itself is a little Viltrox L116T at 20% intensity and 5600 degrees Kelvin. On either side of the screen, about an inch away from the screen and facing slightly toward the front, at around shoulder level, we place the other two Viltrox lights, only these ones at 30 degrees intensity, or 30% intensity. By the way, these come with batteries, but if you pick up the optional DC adapter, they can be added to the chain of instruments that come on together. That contributes to, the, to creating a, a space that feels so right and that's empowering, that from this place you could say anything, and uh, variation too. The only thing left is to set the active green screen intensity to 75% from the remote. Even better, preset it to 75% and add it to the chain so that it comes on with everything else. So now everything at this level is ready for you to shoot. From here, coming forward, we have a choice to make, depending on how much room you want to give yourself between the screen and the next item on our checklist, which will be a small table if you use a teleprompter. I like having a little extra room to walk through the set without feeling like I'm constantly on the verge of knocking something over. 
which is how it always used to feel. And remember that even if you are, you know, practically touching the screen, you'll still be focusing at around one foot six inches from the front of the screen where your face will be. If you allow yourself another two feet to the table, you're now three feet six inches from the front of the screen to the front of the table. That means you're four foot three inches from the back wall to the front of the table. So do you need all that room? Strictly speaking, no. But variation three, if you have the space, I think the peace of mind is worth it. Knowing there's so little chance that you're gonna knock over a light is, is pretty nice. So here we are at the front of a small table with a laptop. The laptop is there to power the teleprompter. I use Prompt Smart Pro because it follows my voice, which takes a huge amount of stress out of following text. It means you can improvise without losing your place. If you don't use a teleprompter, you don't gain any more space anyway, so we'll just go ahead and include it in the total space requirement. Coming forward from the table, we're now seven feet, two inches from the back wall to the front of the camera lens. We're using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K right now with a 24 millimeter T1.5 Rokinon Prime lens. I like having all that room at the bottom of the exposure range, even though I have to give up an autofocusing zoom lens. The decent ones are in the 3.5 or 4.0 f-stop range. So variation four, with a setup this small, you might do just as well with a prosumer camcorder or a DSLR because a cinema camera doesn't do any better with green screen footage at these lower lighting levels, even though it takes in more light. What that really means is don't worry about the camera for this setup. I demonstrated it with a cinema camera, a prosumer camera, a DSLR, and an iPhone. You can watch that comparison here. They all look pretty good. So, what does this mean? It means that the actual distance you end up with from the back wall to the front of the lens is going to depend on two things. One, how much room you need to feel comfortable and confident traveling around your space. And two, the focal length of your lens, which is what determines how much of your subject you see in the viewfinder at any particular distance. If you have only a longer lens available, like a 50 millimeter, you'll need to be further away from the screen. So try any average wide angle lens, say from 16 to 25 millimeters. That will allow you to use the distances we're discussing with no stress or strain. Now, on this same camera level plane, we find two GVM 800D light panels. Set one to 100% and the other to 50%, just to provide the possibility of modeling. To make the light softer, you can use these little barn doors that often come as a bonus if you order the lights from B&H. Simplify the white balance by setting all the lights to 5600 degrees Kelvin. And the GVMs you can set from your phone if you like. And so finally, eight feet, nine inches from the back wall, we arrive at the back of the whole camera teleprompter complex. Now I've been using this 17 inch prompter people dedicated teleprompter for over 10 years. It's still just like brand new, it'll probably outlive me, but it takes up an entire extra foot of space. And with this template, you don't really need that. Uh, a regular old iPad will do. So there's variation five. Let's talk about the total space requirement. Before the AGS arrived, we'd been moving further and further out from the screen to use some of the other prime lenses. We ended up spilling out into the hallway and that cost us a whopping 14 feet from the back wall to the back of the camera and with no room to walk around it. I mean, the last thing you want is to be doing something this technical and setting yourself up to make a bunch of mistakes because you can't see what you're doing. It's almost the perfect recipe for stress and anxiety. But now we're well under nine feet for the entire infrastructure. That's five feet less than we were using before. So let's review the variations. 
If you don't need all that room between the screen and the table, you can cut out one foot, leaving you under eight feet total. And if you use a true wide angle lens, you can probably cut out another foot, leaving you at less than seven feet. And if you use an iPad instead of a dedicated 17 inch teleprompter, you might be able to cut another foot, partially because you won't need such a big rig to support it. So maybe you're down to under six feet overall. And besides the room, there are other benefits. Since we're no longer open to the hallway, the room itself can be light tight. So our white balance and exposure have become a kind of set it and forget it thing. Thanks to the extra firepower of the GVM lights, there's less digital noise to process, which is one of the things that makes getting a good key easier. And then there's the ripple effect to your business. This setup makes it far easier to get a professional result from your shoot. When it's easier, you do more of it. When you do more, you get better. When you get better, people notice. And when people notice, good things happen in your business. I hope you found this helpful. Any questions, put them in the comments. I, I do try to answer them all. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Visible Authority.